What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome to episode 30 of the Rise to Glory here with Gibraltar Apex and today I have for you guys the Europa League playoffs. This is our chance to get to the Europa League group stage. We have Panathinaikos standing in our way, the Greek side. We're actually away from home for this first game of the competition. Panathinaikos, a very, very strong team. If we look in the Super League, they finished runners-up last year. The year before that, they won it. One of the big dogs, really, in Greece. Uh, in real football, certainly one of the most recognisable names, uh, especially to me as an English fan, I guess. Um, you know, you get the likes of AEK Athens, Panathinaikos, uh, Olympiakos, and then the rest kind of all merge into one, if I'm honest. But, uh, yeah, they're not going to be an easy team for us to beat. I, weirdly enough, they've got Luke Steele playing for them, former Barnsley man. I didn't even realise he still played football, if I'm honest. I remember him um, when he was playing for uh, United and he never got a game and then he got loaned out. So a little bit of a weird player to just kind of see randomly here in Greece. I'm hoping we can maybe beat him a few times today. It's not going to be an easy game, though. They've got some very, very strong players. If we just take a look at their best player, Sergio Sanchez, gives you an idea of the kind of calibre of player we're going to be playing against today. So, yeah, let's get into today's game. I'm actually going to stick with the 4-4-2 we've been really frequently playing throughout this kind of competition and throughout this kind of crazy qualifying run that we've been on. And the reason I'm going to stick with it is simply because, well, as we saw last episode, we drew 2-2 with Basel using it. And I kind of feel like Basel are no worse. Well, no, they're definitely... I'd say they're better than Panathinaikos, but I wouldn't say Panathinaikos are any better than Basel, I guess. So... It kind of makes sense just to try and stick with the system. Hope it works in our favour. And, um, you know, just kind of encourage the players. If we could get a good result in this first leg, you know, maybe get a few goals away from home, that would be great. This could be one of these games where we get absolutely stuffed or it could be a game where we just are really, really resilient. We turn up, we do well, and somehow, you know, we scrape through it. I mean, if we could get a draw, that would be great. If we could get a goal and not concede too many that would be pretty good too. Obviously, away goals a pretty massive factor here. Looking at the stats, we're having a lot more of the possession, but Panathinaikos having a lot more of it in terms of the actual chances. And actually, they've scored here 1 0. I'm really confused as to why Helder Costa has his name all in capitals. Is that a date? Is that a database thing? I'm really confused. He must have a shirt name that's different, but why is it in all capitals? An answers on a postcard. Why is he allowed a name in all capitals? That should be illegal. Get him off the pitch. They're filled in an ineligible player. Anyway, it's 1-0 Panathinaikos. Not the greatest start. And they've got another chance here. And they've scored again. That's two set pieces, man. Oh, dear. Two set pieces in the space of two minutes. I mean, if we were going to beat Panathinaikos here in the Europa League, we needed to ensure that we didn't concede set pieces. And we've just conceded two of them. Inexcusable when you think about it, really. When you want to defend well, when you're going away from home in Europe, you've got to, you know, defend your corners. You can't afford to give away cheap goals like that. And, well, we've done that here. And they're on the attack again. They could score a third goal in the space of about five minutes. Fortunately for us, Felix in goal is an absolute god. Unfortunately for us, they've got a player who apparently can throw it further than Rory Delap. And Helder Costa, a Felix again with a save. Thank you, Felix. Can we get a thank you, Felix, in the chat? Get it down there. Episode 30. Go down, scroll, smash the like button, and just write thank you, Felix. He is keeping us in this game at the moment. We'll use that term loosely because they are on the attack again here. They probably will score, although somehow we've dealt with it. Not been not been the best kind of first 35 minutes. I, I want to change the system already. I almost want to say, screw it, let's just let's just make a double change now. You know what, screw it. We've got absolutely nothing to lose. I feel like I'm, I've got too much of a reckless at attitude, if I'm honest, in these Europa League and kind of Champions League games where I kind of like to change tactics for the sake of it. But the 4-4-2 just isn't working for us. We're not creating enough going forward. I want to bring on two completely different kind of attacking players in Anthony Hernandez and Leon O'Connor and see if they can do something for us. I'm going to tell the fans... The, uh, sorry, the players, that I'm not very happy with that performance, that it was awful. They look fired up. Can we have a better second half performance here? We've brought on two changes already, so we're not going to do anything too crazy now. If they score another set piece, I might scream. I, I can't scream. They're going to score. I can't scream. I'm not going to. Oh dear. Wow. Pretty poor. Pretty poor this game. I wouldn't mind if we were conceding goals which weren't scrappy like this, if it was a wonder strike, if it was a nicely worked move. 
But there's something very, very frustrating about conceding set pieces and, well, conceding three of them here is fairly inexcusable, if I might say so. I mean, we're not completely out of this game. If we could get a goal or two, away goals might come into our favour. Gilbert whips in the ball. O'Connor, he can't find the net, unfortunately. As I said, if we could somehow get two goals back here, which isn't going to happen, I'm going to say it now. Sorry to break everyone's hearts and dreams. We might have a chance. But the issue is, well, simply put, that we're not going to score two. We've not even had a shot on target. Well, we've not even had two shots on target yet, unfortunately for us. We'll be fortunate if it ends 3-0, if I'm being brutally honest. In this second half, we've not actually conceded that many shots against us. And actually, we've not been too bad. But the issue is that you can't win a game if you don't score. And particularly in Europe, particularly in games where away goals really do mean something, you can't not score an away goal and, well... What have we done here? We've not scored. and We are just going to have to face the consequences for that, I guess you could say. Nice play there. Victor scores. It's another long throw. It's just another set piece that we are just not dealing with. That's shocking. It really it infuriates me, if I'm honest. Hernandez, I've got to question your effort. Can we, can we just re right, rewind? Watch Hernandez's effort to go for the ball here. I might fine him for this jump. He's getting... I don't care. I don't care what anyone says. He is getting fined for that jump. Because that was criminal. That was actually one of the worst things I've ever seen on a football pitch. And I had to watch Brendan Rodgers as Liverpool at the start of this year. That was bad. That was worse, what I've just seen there. That was awful. Victor scores. Right, skip the highlight. I don't want to see it. It's 4-0 here. It's going to be worse than the Basel game, isn't it? I said I didn't think Panathinaikos' squad was any better than Basel's. I think they heard me. I think they wanted to prove me wrong. They wanted to make me cry inside. I'll tell you what, they're doing that right now. It's the 89th minute. They could well get another, if I'm honest. A minute and a half left. Or, or we could just get a red, you know, red card work to Robert. You've been a naughty boy there, haven't you, mate? Second yellow card. He's off. I'm just glad there's only a minute left of us being down a man, if I'm honest. <laughs> Silver linings and that. Bonavia, you get you get a chance to play some football. Congrats! I guarantee we'll probably now concede from this, won't we? We almost did. Felix collects four nil here. Not great, not great at all. O'Connor tries to get in Connolly but can't do it. It's going to finish four nil here. It's disappointing. It really is. I'm almost a bit annoyed, really, that we... we, Because the thing is, we'll probably end up drawing the next leg at home or something. And now I'll look back on this leg as a, a leg where we kind of just threw it away. We tried the 4-4-2, it didn't work. We tried the 4-2-3-1, didn't really work for us. All in all, it's just been a pretty, pretty shocking display. And, um, yeah, I, I'm disappointed, to say the least. Let's tell the boys... I'm not happy. I, I don't want to tell them that they were unlucky. I can't. How can you not fault them? We lost 4 0. This is a squad that is capable of holding Basel to a draw. It's capable of winning away against Copenhagen. It's not a weak team. We are punching above our weight, yes, but I don't want to see us roll on our backs like that and lose in that manner 4 0. Roberts is going to be suspended for the second leg. I probably would have dropped him anyway. Hernandez, how bad was your performance last game? I don't want to single him out if he didn't play that badly, but, I mean, he missed that header, and that annoyed me. 6.4, right, you you deserve to, you deserve to be fined. I'm going to issue fine him for one week. Deserves it. He accepted it. Excellent. I even got the achievement, I'm the boss. I don't often find players. You were that bad that you deserve it. Right, guys, I will join you guys for the second leg. We're going to try and make something of this. Hopefully we can. I will join you guys in just a second, and hopefully we're not going to lose 10-0 on aggregate. Okay, guys, so it's second leg time here against Panathinaikos. No real expectations going into it. I think I'm going to use this game as kind of a chance just to ramble a little bit about my expectations, my goals for this season. Um, obviously, we've, we've I say my goals for this season, I kind of feel like we've achieved the goals that I had for this year. As much as I value domestic success in Gibraltar, the ultimate aim is to progress in Europe and really assert ourselves as a dominant force in Europe, help boost the reputation um, of the Gibraltarian Premier Division um, in Europe to hopefully eventually get a TV money in the league, which will help us long term. So to be honest, how we've gone so far... I'm I'm pretty happy with it. We've we've boosted the reputation of the competition this year. I already know that that's going to be the case. 
Um, we've reached the furthest I think I expected us to reach in terms of we're going to go out in this Europa playoff. We've managed to add a hell of a lot of money to our bank balance. I believe after this game we're going to be edging quite, kind of quite close to £1.5 million in the bank balance. Unfortunately, as you can see, as we concede, we, we've not got the, the talent, we've not got the quality to kind of contest with the likes of Panathinaikos. But if we can just have a few more good years of getting some money into the bank, the chairman's a little bit generous, likes to back me as a manager because we bring some success. I'm hopeful that eventually we will get to a stage where we have enough money to go professional, we can then start to sign players from abroad, and then we should be aiming for kind of the Champions League group stage. It's a little bit weird to think back, I guess, on the Basel game, considering that had the results been the other way around, had we drawn the first game 2-2, which was a great performance, I mean, we we would have had a shot at getting to the group stage, which would have been absolutely unprecedented. Unfortunately, obviously that didn't happen, and it doesn't look like we're going to be going through in Europe unless we can score six goals, which, spoilers, probably isn't going to happen. But I don't know, I feel like we can be quite happy and content with what we've achieved this year. As I said, the money's going to help that we've raised, but the actual coefficient increase that we are going to be giving to Gibraltar for getting this far is going to help as well massively. Beating some of the teams we have, getting to the stage we've got to, is hopefully going to knock kind of the league's rep up in Europe, help us get those coefficient spots. It's going to help us personally. I have a feeling, and I can't be 100% sure on this, but following on from how well we've done this year, we shouldn't have to play in the first kind of qualifying round of the Champions League next year. I think we'll enter at the second round. I might be wrong there. Um, it's going to be kind of close, but that's something to be happy about. As mentioned, the money's good as well. In terms of domestically, last year we won the quadruple. The Pepe Reyes Cup, the Rock Cup, the Senior League Cup, and of course the Premier Division. I want to do the same again, I guess. We should be winning the quadruple most years, especially when we go professional we can attract in players from abroad. We are just going to stomp teams in Gibraltar. I think on my Gibraltar save kind of last year, not last year, sorry, two years ago in FM14, um, having gone professional and with the rest of the teams in Gibraltar not being professional, I went unbeaten in nine or eight years. It was a, it was a very long period of time of just being unbeaten. And we will eventually get to that stage, I hope, here. I'm hoping that obviously we can help support Gibraltar and it's not going to be a case of us stomping the teams constantly. With this save, and I mentioned this a long time ago, but people will have forgotten. But if we can get the Premier Division to be within about the top 16 or 15 leagues in Europe, bear in mind we're currently 200th, um, there is a, or there was a bug, I don't know if it still exists. It's a bug, kind of, you guys can decide it's what happens in game. But basically, a TV deal is announced in Gibraltar when you get to a certain kind of rank in terms of the league's reputation in Europe. And as a result of that, all the teams start getting upwards of £60 million a year in TV money. Now that might sound a little bit mental, but what it means ends up happening is the Premier Division turns into almost a Super League. Teams have so much money to spend, they don't know where to put it, and it gets a little bit silly and a little bit crazy, but what ends up happening is the Gibraltar Premier Division becomes this massive kind of competition where there's a lot of teams spending lots of money, players come from abroad to play in Gibraltar, and it almost becomes its own little footballing paradise and teams will start to build their own stadiums as a result. But anyway, that is a little bit disappointing. We do get £164,000 for getting knocked out in that stage. I don't know if we get any separate TV money in the Europa League, whether or not that comes at the end of the year. Our bank balance, however, is going to sit at £1.4 million. It's almost £1.45, really. So as I mentioned, we are getting close to that £1.5 million mark. Um, we can't ask for professional status just yet. I will do that as soon as I'm available, and that is uh, available to do. You can see our transfer budget here sticks at £600,000. I'm not even tempted to spend it. Not that there's anyone to bring in who would want to join us as a semi-pro club, um, but it gives you an idea of the kind of money that we are starting to kind of get together and have at our disposal. But anyway, guys, that is going to wrap up everything for this episode. Sorry that we lost this game fairly convincingly 6-0 on aggregate. I hope I kind of took the second game in a good way just to kind of talk through things. I know after that first game, I was pretty annoyed, if I'm honest. FM, I don't often get annoyed at FM, but it can be frustrating, particularly with a save like this where you get so close and yet you end up, you know, not getting anywhere in Europe in a year. But anyway, if you have enjoyed episode 30, please do smash the like button. I do greatly appreciate it. As I mentioned, write thanks, Felix, down in the comments if you've watched to that point in the video. And other than that, it is me, Jack, and I'll talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.